Right, uh, now this video is about spears. Um, I don't actually have a spear uh, here with me. I decided that would be a little bit dangerous to be wielding around. What I've got is um, an eight foot length of dowling, uh, but it'll do the job of illustrating, uh, playing the part of a spear. Now, eight foot is about the longest a one-handed spear can be. Uh, there were, of course, longer spears, but they weren't wielded in, in quite the way that uh, I'm talking about. The style of spear I'm talking about is one that you could use uh, in melee as an individual um, with one hand. Uh, my reenactment society many years ago did make a nine-foot spear and nobody could wield it. Uh, and there were some guys much bigger and heftier than me in the society and they, get, they gave it a go and it was considered to be just unwieldy by pretty much everyone. So eight foot seems to be about the longest that you can, uh, you can use in one hand. And uh, some of the smaller, weaker members of the society even didn't like eight footers. Now, the principal point I'm going to be arguing is that I think that most of the time spears were used underarm, not overarm. Now, it's very important for you to understand exactly what I mean by underarm versus overarm, so uh, let me try to make it clear. Overarm, uh, I have the, uh, the little finger of my hand closest to the enemy that I'm trying to hurt, and uh, my, the back of my hand is away from my head, and I'm using the spear like this, overarm, okay? Whereas underarm is the other way around, and my little finger is further away from the enemy, and I'm using the spear like this. Now, I can use the spear underarm down here or up here. It's still, this still counts as underarm, okay? Um, even if the, the, uh, the, the spear is above my shoulder, it's still the, the, the way I'm holding it is still underarm. Okay, so that's what I mean by underarm. Now, I believe that spears were normally used, not exclusively used, but normally used underarm for several reasons. Now, the first is reach. Spears are good because they are long. That's their, that's their shtick, that's their unique selling point. Uh, they can't punch as hard as an axe or a mace, they're not as wieldy as a sword, uh, they don't have great, you can't really chop with one, they haven't, you know, the blade on them isn't really very useful, all you can do is thrust, but they are long, and that's, that's how they, they are better than other weapons. So if the enemy's got a load of swords and we've got spears, haha, the enemy won't be able to get near us. Now if I hold a spear underarm, I can hold it with my elbow very close to the end here, like that, and that's perfectly... Uh, uh, that's perfectly you know, um, stable in my hand, okay? So here, uh, you can't see it of course, but there's an awful lot of spear sticking out the front there. And I can, of course I get the length of my arm as well, like that, and I get the length of my lunge, which you can't fully appreciate either, but if you add the eight, eight foot spear minus uh, most of a cubit there, plus the length of my arm and the lunge, it's, I don't know, it's, it's got to be at least 15 foot uh, reach I've got with this thing. Uh, if I use it underarm. And if I use it underarm, I can poke downwards at the guy's feet, I can poke up, upwards at his face, and I can poke not the guy opposite me, not the guy next to him, but the guy two away from him over there. Oof. Or the guy, <laughs> I have to avoid the ceiling light, uh, you know, two away from him down the road that way. Um, I've got a lot of choice in what I thrust at. If, on the other hand, I hold my spear overarm, I have to hold it in the middle. Um, and uh, I've now got very limited range. For a start, I've now only got a four foot spear because I'm holding it in the middle. And if I want to thrust at someone's feet, that's extremely, in fact, he, right, seriously, he'd have to be standing only about two paces in front. He'd have to be standing within sword's reach of me, easy sword reach of me, for me to get him in the foot. And to get him in the foot, look how awkward my position is. And it's a really weak thrust as well. Get it? I, his foot really isn't a viable target anymore. His knee, mm, yeah, I could get him in the knee, but it wouldn't be very easy. I could get him in the belly, shoop, I could get him from the belly upwards, definitely, no problem. Um, I can't, I could get the guy next to him with a bit of awkwardness. If I, if I, uh, stepped out of, out of the line, out of my formation a little bit, then I could get the guy either side of him. But the guys either side of them, no, they're out of reach. Um, so my angles of attack uh, are fewer. Uh, my thrust uh, from most angles is much weaker. Admittedly, I can do a very strong thrust there. There's one 
throughout, if, if he, have I got exactly, the, if he's standing at exactly the right distance from me, and I get exactly the right line of, of, of attack, then I can, there is one very strong thrust. But other than that, all my thrusts are a bit weak and awkward. Um, another thing is that because I'm holding it in the middle, if you knock the spear sideways, this bit of spear sticking out the back is a counterweight that, that's in sympathy with that. So knocking the spear here, uh, it's, it's very difficult to stop the spear spinning that way because the weight of this swapping great counterweight is, is, is helping that, that turning motion. So if someone wants to knock aside my spear with his sword or edge of his shield or whatever, he finds that very, very easy. Um, whereas if I've got it braced against my arm like this, uh, he can knock it aside a bit, but it doesn't go anything like as far, and I can bring it straight back. It comes straight back. Another thing I can do is I can parry with this spear. If I've got it like this, underarm, I can parry, and not just spears uh, a thrust aimed at me, I can rake a very large, imagine the volume of air in front of me that I can uh, parry enemy spears in. It's very large. And when I did reenactment, most of the parrying you do with your spear isn't against attacks aimed at you, it's protecting the guys either side of you and the guys either side of them. I can, if anyone does use the reach of his spear to try to attack the guy two to my right, He's going to come across me, and I can then just knock his spear up or down, I, and it becomes quite exhausting after a while because in a long protracted spear fight, you're doing this raking spears, raking spears out of the air all the time, and um, it gets quite tiring. But that's what you've got to do. Um, so I can parry, not just blows against aimed at me, but I can protect all the guys next to me if I use my spear underarm. If I use it overarm, however, um, I can't really parry with it at all, and I can't help the guys either side of me much. Um, plus, every time this gets knocked, don't forget, there were spikes on both ends of spears, okay? So I've got, a spear, I've got a spike on that end of it, and I'm a danger to the guys behind me every time this spear gets knocked. Um, so, those are some reasons that I believe that spears were used uh, underarm rather than overarm. Um, there are others. Um, oh, and just want to uh, make clear as well that if I do, if I've got the shield, if I do want to get uh, over the top of an obstacle or, or whatever, I can just raise the spear. I can even uh, um, take it away from my elbow and, and thrust quite effectively like that. Um, but we would, uh, fighting across obstacles, quite often have our, uh, in the reenactment society, quite often be holding our spears up like this. And you can, you can fight like that for quite some while. And so, uh, you know, the, getting, getting the spear high isn't particularly a problem with an underarm uh, hold. Um, so you can parry, you've got the reach, you're less danger to your friends, greater help to your friends. Yeah, I reckon underarm's the way to go.